Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Um, today, my husband has to work um, uh, in the uh, late afternoon, so that's what I'm going to be doing the rest of the videos, but um, I'm going to make one this morning. Um, it's uh, The Guile, Aiden to Armageddon, um, by Dr. Joy Jeffries, um, controlled by heart. One of the most proficient war tactics against the mind that has power to change everything on Earth is a top-secret U.S. government project called HARP, which you've probably heard of before. H-A-A-R-P, all in capitals. High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. This technology has ability to drive both humans and animals insane. HARP's beamed waves are harmonically tuned to confuse human and animal thought processes, as well as interfere with weather, weather, weather patterns. Sorry. Jam satellites. No, it's for, for messing with people's minds, too. People, so I wonder if that's the humming noise. That might be the humming noise. Um, okay, and jam satellites and change Earth's upper atmosphere. HARP consists of radio beams that heat up Earth's ionosphere, utilizing Tesla-type energy. Such controlled energy transmits electromagnetic waves that rebound back to Earth after striking, um, striking the ionosphere, producing disastrous effects. HARP is manned by an army set on impairing brain functions of targeted populations globally. It is a dynamic tool for the anti-Messiah. I know. Uh, I apologize. I had to fix something. Um. Yes, babe. Um, okay, so such controlled energy transmits electromagnetic waves that rebound back to Earth after striking the ionosphere, producing disastrous effects. HARP is manned by an army set on impairing brain functions of targeted populations globally. It is a dynamic tool for the anti-messiah and his cronies to possess as part of their hidden arsenal. During January 2010, four giant rings appeared on Australian government weather satellites and radars that seemed to manipulate wave action from the ocean. At the same time, a low pressure formed. These rings stayed in place as clouds continued to move, defying natural rotation. Was this a natural phenomenon never before detected or harp running a secret weather generating project caught on camera? The strange anomaly was passed off by media as a natural occurrence. Australia, less than a year later, suffer suffered flooding from late December 2010 into January 2011. Media claimed this flooding was of biblical proportions, while blaming it on La Nina or La Nina weather pattern, which has produced monsoonal rains over the Western Pacific and Southeast Asia. According, sorry, according to Australia's Bureau of Meteorology, Average rainfall rose to nearly double Roscoe Libre long of a normal year, making 2010 their wettest year on record at the time. Did rings caught on radar a year earlier set the stage for Australia's massive flooding? It is a documented fact. Crop circles are geometric rings that generate changes in all plants and seeds within um within their circles. Even traces of electromagnetic anomalies are noted as well as them having direct effects upon human and animal endocrine systems of those entering the circles. Underground water and dragon ley lines hold the key to crop circle placement. Ancient circular megalithic buildings like Stonehenge are also situated on ley lines using water to generate changes in nature is a common element found in, a, in sacred sacred harmonic geometry. Yeah. This same science is used yeah. extensively by HARP and Tesla technology to manipulate, right. control, I'm and entangle right ELF right or ELF waves into producing right. disastrous right. results. Piercing the veil with CERN. Satan will utilize every force available 
whether man-made or through his own supernatural ability to deceive and control humanity. Another manifestation of his increasing arsenal comes from a program called CERN, C-E-R-N, European Organization for Nuclear Research. For Nuclear Research, the world's largest atom smasher. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, we're going to continue on here. Okay. The world's largest atom smasher said to be seeking an understanding of invisible dark matter and energy. That doesn't sound too good, does it? Only 4% of our universe is visible as the rest exists as a form of invisible energy. CERN is where the World Wide Web was invented by Tim Berners-Lee with a small team during 18, 1989 to 1994. Sorry, that was almost a tongue twister. Um, CERN, an international research organization located partly in Sweden and partly in France near Geneva, has as its primary focus the containing of electrically charged antimatter particles using electromagnetic and laser traps. The antimatter that they produce and trap is used to study natural law so it can be decoded and manipulated. Particles and antiparticles are separated to try and identify first matter. Protons are made to collide in the Large Hadron Collider at the speed of light against a block of copper or tungsten. Upon impact, antiprotons are generated and collected supposedly resembling the state of our universe after a Big Bang. The accelerator itself is an octagonal shaped ring. Rings seem to have an unusual ability to generate changes in natural law. This may explain why circles have always been contributed to the devil's work. <clears throat> Many theories have been contemplated about CERN, including a fascinating one touting, touting the collider being like the Ark of the Covenant, which had an ability to talk with Yahuwah. <clears throat> It is my personal contention, while the Ark was the same size as the sarcophagus of the Great Pyramid and fashioned like Egyptian arcs, it makes one wonder if these arcs house the, the Allahim particles, or G-O-D particles, received from the pyramid's collider that had an ability to manipulate Earth's natural forces. Were the pyramids with their long corridors ancient colliders? Yes, I believe they were, and somebody on Earth pushing the CERN project has known this for a long time. There is no doubt CERN officials want to control the GOD particle, or the Yahuwah particle, a first matter that unifies all fields of nature. The scientific community calls this GOD particle their Higgs boson, which they contend gives mass to all atomic particles and is like glue holding natural fields of nature together. By understanding quantum entanglement of these particles, scientists are gaining greater knowledge of all things and how they are connected to the creator. For example, unified fields are connected through, through a magnetic grid permeating our ent entire universe like a web or matrix. By creating particle explosions, scientists at CERN are attempting to enter into Yahuwah's web of creation, or G.O.D.'s web of creation. They want to have power to reach out and touch Yahuwah. Although touching Yahuwah is impossible, they believe he exists where there is no time, and if they can penetrate through his veil, they will demonstrate to our Creator that they have gained power to play in his dimension. Satan's army is trying to play Yahuwah, or play G.O.D., using CERN, in effort to merge with time, timelessness and manipulate days as well as natural forces. They know human DNA is affected by the smallest of particles because there is a gene directly affected by electromagnetic fields. But this gene helps animals navigate and allows humans to determine whether we are up or down. 
This is why anything affecting Earth's magnetic grid directly affects all living things on Earth. Proteins released from these genes totally control circadian rhythm, which maintains our homeostatic environment. Sil since sound created everything, Yahuwah said, let there be light, and there was light. CERN has come to terms with their findings that the smallest particles do not come from those things which are. The scripture has already told us about this. Bella, no chewing. Now faith is the substance. Now faith or amuna is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith or amuna we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahuwah, so that things which are are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hebrews eleven one through three. Einstein warned years before he died, if the unifying element that CERN is desperately trying to identify and capture was ever harnessed, mankind could affect everything, which would result in chaos in the wrong hands. It is important to note Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is said to have contributed thousands of dollars to the CERN project. Even Pope Benedict XVI in 2012 bragged that CERN was allowing science and religion to meet. Sorry guys, I had to pause for a minute. Um, I had a phone call with the sister and um, it was really great. Um, okay, we have, um, okay, we're at playing Yahuwah by manipulating small particles will produce serious consequences which affect time. The anti-Messiah plan, er, anti plans to use this to his advantage. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into, the, into his, his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Daniel 7.25 October 30th, 20, er, 2011 Reporter Richard Gray for the Telegraph, um, www.telegraph.co.uk, um, announced in his article, World's Most Powerful Laser to Tear Apart the Vacuum of Space, that, that a laser was planning to be built in a European country capable of tearing apart the fabric of space by boiling it using an intense electrical field in order to expose ghost particles. Ghost particles are considered particles so fast in their resonances they move in and out of existence, bending light and cloaking themselves. Boiling the vacuum of space would expose any dimension between our physical realm and a spiritual realm hidden within the large amounts of dark matter filling our universe. The Extreme Light Infrastructure, ELI, ELI Ultra High Field Laser, will contain 10 laser beams combined with more energy than our sun. Gray went on to say, the Science and Technology Facilities Council, which provides funds for Britain's involvement in major science facilities, including the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, has marked out that ELI as a key area it wants to focus on. The ELI, yeah, no. as a key area. No, no, no. Less than no. two months later, on December 13th, 2011, News media announced to the world scientists at CERN believed they had found evidence of the Yahuwah particle, linking all things together and confirm, confirmed it March 16, 2013. If CERN manipulates Earth's unified grid by changing space and time, it will affect human and animal behavior through ELF, ELF transmissions bombarding their pineal glands, a small cone-shaped organ in the brain of most uh, vertebrates that secretes melatonin. This organ is directly affected by harmonic changes in Earth's resonance. Melatonin is regulated by light that then directly influences circadian rhythm or system's timing. In vertebrates that, that are non-mammalian, their pineal gland functions as a photoreceptive third eye as well as an organ of their endocrine system. Inside mammals, it is an endocrine organ regulated by light enter entering through our eyes. Even though there are variations in anatomy and physiology of many dif differing species, their pineal gland remains central to directly affecting circadian rhythms. 
These rhythms allow humans and animals to internally measure time, as well as maintain physiological timekeeping with our external environment. The pineal gland is a single organ attached to the roof in the posterior part of a, hu of a human forebrain by a stalk. This forebrain consists of a hypothalamus, thalamus, meth methalamus, and epith epithalamus. The subthalamus is often recognized as a distinct division. The posterior, posterior of our two brain ves vesicles are formed by a specialization during embryonic development. Most importantly, our pineal gland is completely formed 49 days after conception. Only in frogs and lizards does one part of our, their complex pineal gland, know, known as a, part, uh, a parietal eye, project, up, project upward through their skull and lie just under their skin. In all other vertebrates, the pineal gland is located beneath the roof of the skull. This means frogs and lizards. Okay. This, this means frogs and lizards literally have a workable third eye. Cells within the pineal gland include classic photoreceptor cells known to have known to have, sorry guys, known to have existed in early vertebrates. Besides really being a third eye, the pineal gland plays a major role in sexual development, hibernation, metabolism, and seasonal breeding in both birds and mammals. It also connects worker bees and ants to their queen to enable them to build and maintain their hives. If the queen dies, the hive collapses because their connection to, to her universal collective consciousness is severed. Without the connection, they wander around aimlessly, as was discussed in Volume 1 of the Beguiled series. Um, I, I'm eventually going to get Volume 1 and Volume 3. Um, I just felt like this one was more important to start with. Um, within mammals, a major circuitry of nerve fibers extends from a variety of sources in the brain to the pineal gland. Biologists are most familiar with an area where neural inputs follow a retinohypothalamic tract extending from the eyes to the pineal gland. Retinohypothalamic fibers project onto nuclei in the brain's hypothalamus. These nuclei serve as oscillators for 24 hours, which is a time clock for the circadian rhythm or system, regulating daily physiological and behavioral rhythms. Light and darkness relayed from the eye to the pineal gland re regulate circadian neural activity. Many other biological functions of our pineal gland are reported as unknown in mainstream research. But to those who know all about it being an, an, an antenna, they are planning to control the bodies of all living creatures using just that single little gland in our foreheads as their ultimate remote control remote control tool. By entangling their evil technology with the elf waves it receives and gives off. Various vertebrate species have high levels of melatonin produced and secreted during nighttime, while low levels are released during daylight hours. Light influences reduction of melatonin production, which in turn becomes elevated at night. There is a seasonal effect of light on the pineal gland during summer. When days are longer and nights are shorter, the duration of increased nighttime melatonin is less than during winter when nights are longer. Melatonin regulates physiology in everything from insects to mammals. For species that breed seasonally, melatonin regulates both males and females to mate. The retina in our, eye, in our eyes passes light into our brain, stimulating the pineal gland to release melatonin that directly affects sleep patterns, body temperature regulation, cardiovascular rhythm, and immune system function. Direct man manipulation of the pineal gland can be accomplished through nothing more than light. Light is the portion of electromagnetic radiation seen by our eyes that gives us sight. Visible light has a wavelength of 400 to 780 nanometers and a frequency range between 405 um, THZ to 790 THZ. Um, something hurts. Light also includes lower frequency radiation called infrared as well as higher frequencies known as ultraviolet light. But both of these cannot be seen by a human eye. The four major properties with a calculated speed of 300,000 kilometers per second within a vacuum. Light was the first natural steadfast element brought into existence by 
G-O-D, or Yahuwah, and it is required in order to keep all living things alive on earth. And Yahuwah said, Let there be light, and there was light. And Yahuwah saw the light, that it was good. And Yahuwah divided the light from the darkness. And Yahuwah called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Genesis 1, 3-5 Light exists in tiny particles called photons that exhibit properties of both particles and waves. This property is referred to as particle wave duality, and optics play a crucial role in harnessing it, creating optical traps to hold electromagnetically controlled particles, just like Egyptian arcs once did contain in the pyramid sarcophagus and exactly what CERN is perfecting. Photon beams make up traditional x-rays, carry a low radiation charge, and have a much lower mass than proton beams. Photon beam energy can be deposited into healthy tissue where it can produce side effects. In fact, proton beams can also be energized to specific speeds or velocities to, to determine how deeply and just where the beams will deliver their radiation. As proton radiation beams move through a body, they slow down when they interact with orbiting electrons. Then when protons have slowed down sufficiently, they release a burst of energy um, that can be pinpointed <clears throat> at a precise location. Such precise technology has the capability to be aimed directly at our pineal glands. Could it be possible the flash stick used in the movie Men in Black 3 <clears throat> really is a tool that does already exist to control mankind's brain and what it stores as memory. Yeah, it is a fact. But no one would know. No one would know. No one yeah. Would know because they, they, they erase their memory. They wouldn't even know if they did anything, you know? Yeah. Or what happened. Yeah. Could have been, you know, kind of makes sense. Sorry. It, yeah, it's okay, babe. I'm listening and it is a fact CERN employees created our internet web in 1989 and then began building a new network of 100,000 computers called The Grid in 2008. They claimed they needed The Grid in place to crunch large amounts of data. That is right. Large data created from an electromagnetic grid they plan to link directly to every living brain on this planet, ensuring we can never log off. <laughs> Yeah, that is why ancient pyramids are located on ley lines all over the world because they are connected like a large electromagnetic grid. And in the past, serpents sent their universal communication out to all their worker bees. How do you think all those pyramids were built with such precision and so similar around the world? It was done just like ants and bees who build their ant hills and hives all over the world connected to their queen whether she is in the hive or miles away. Pyramid builders were connected to the serpent and his wisdom. That is why all secret societies worship the beehive and claim their ultimate desire uh, is to one day have universal yeah. consciousness when their G-A-O-T-U, great architect of the universe, when he becomes Messiah on earth. On the morning of December 9th, 2009, people of Oslo, Norway, witnessed a strange phenomenon in the sky between 7.50 and 8 a.m. A green beam of light extending down to Earth had a rotating spiral at its top that grew large enough to be seen all over northern Norway. This strange anomaly was sighted as a Russian rocket launched by one of their submarines, which Russians quickly denied. Some believe it was, was the firing of a proton accelerator in Norway, built during the 40s to establish parameters for CERN. A similar strange contrail was witnessed off California's coast during September 2009, which was also blamed on a rocket. On November 9, 2010, still another mysterious rocket-like contrail occurred over American airspace, and NORAD quickly assured everyone it was not a threat. But no Air Force or Navy official seemed to be able to adequately explain its strange occurrence. Is there some kind of threat from space about to happen that Satan's army is preparing for? Yes, there is coming a physical and spiritual war that was set up to happen a long time ago when Yahuwah cursed the serpent and put hatred between the serpent's seed and the woman's seed, according to Genesis 3.15. This final battle called Armageddon between Yahuwah's wheat and Satan's tares is on the horizon. The scriptural references the scripture references Satan's seed as tares. Tares are aggravating weeds found in wheat fields. The ancients 
ref referenced tares as being a degenerative form of wheat, as it mimics wheat until late in its growth cycle. Tear seeds are comparable in size and shape to wheat seeds, but gray in color, and they rarely produce any fruit. Wheat seeds are edible and good for food, whereas tear seeds produce sickness or even death if consumed. In wheat fields, tear roots twist together with wheat roots to such magnitude that tares can only be separated from the wheat at harvest time, just like Yahua does. Wheat grows longer, stronger, and at harvest time is filled with seed bowing in the wind, or bowing in the wind. Tares are weak, but stand upright and proud, never bowing to the wind. Yahusha's wheat and tares parable proves Satan and his, and his lineage have been emulating and disguising themselves in Yahuwah's wheat field for a long time. They have been with humanity since our very beginning, trying desperately to overtake Yahuwah's good crop of wheat. Satan planted his seed among Yahuwah's field, which was an act of blatant disrespect for Yahuwah. Yahusha's parable tells us these tares were allowed to grow until Yahuwah's harvest is completed, because if tares are removed before that time, they could damage roots of some of Yahuwah's wheat. Many times, Satan's evil seeds display a form of yaliness, but deny the power of Yahuwah. These evil beings are proud, boastful lovers of flesh, even wear a, a crucifix around their necks, but never bow or humble themselves before Yahuwah. They not only inhabit places of sin in, the, in this world, they infiltrate sanctuaries in order to destroy true Nazarene or Christianity by promoting their social gospel doctrine, which is one without condemnation. They hide their serpent gray color under a skin of flesh so they can walk unnoticed among humanity, wrapping their tentacles around us, choking life from us and trying to uproot us from ever receiving paradise with our creator at his coming harvest. One thing is for certain, Yahuwah's great harvest is going to bring an end to this age forever, separating his wheat from Satan's tares. Satan was created as Lucifer, a morning star possessing harmonic capability to sing with other morning stars. He was given supernatural ability to manipulate light and sound, the old serpent Satan, appearing in the beginning, deceiving humanity with the Garden of Eden by pretending he and his fruit from the Tree of Knowledge were equal to the Creator's Tree of Life. Now, just as the book of Revelation predicted, he is walking again in the flesh, not as a serpent, but an icon emulating the very image of the bright and morning star that he vehemently despises, Yahusha HaMashiach, or it says JC. Satan's tears are making sure humanity is bombarded by light, different from what Yahuwah created us to biologically process. Natural fire light wavelengths of the color spectrum found in incandescent light bulbs are being totally replaced by LED and CFL bulbs that are not natural because of their bright blue long wavelengths. They intensify unnatural light waves that cause anxiety, headaches, dizziness, vomiting, and pain in already sick people with migraines, eye problems, and lupus but everyone is at risk because the bulbs produce disruption in circadian rhythms and the way the retina perceives images. Fake deadly light is what Satan's tears are mandating humanity bask in so our pineal glands are compromised, allowing our flesh to be easily beguiled. Satan's slithering technology is imprisoning mankind. That is why prophecy explains Yahuwah as has to cut time short for the elect's sake so flesh can be saved. All right, that's the end of that chapter. Um, I just separated it into sections because each, each part of the chapter does have separate sections. Um, the next one will be celestial and terrestrial lamentations, days of sorrow, changes in the sun, moon, and stars. Um, and now it's time to praise Yahuwah. Tora Rabba Abba Yahua And I started a new song, I haven't finished it yet. No weapon formed against me. Ah. 
shall prosper. No trap from the wicked shall prosper. No snare from the devil shall prosper. Yahuwah knows who are his. Do your utmost to show yourself approved. Be ye deceived by wolves and sheep's clothing. For in the last days there will be blasphemers and evil doers. Yahuwah is with me, Yahuwah is for me, Yahuwah is greater than all of these things. If Allah is for me, then who can be against me? I love you all with an everlasting love as our Abba Yahuwah loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Oh, they really do that.